f here written in terms of u and what? v. v. And then what does it tell you u is? u for the first for a. Yeah, for a. We'll do a here. u is x. x. And what's v? 3. 3. OK. So if we're actually going to find f prime here, if we're going to find f prime, how do we go about doing that? Partial u. Times dv Par Sorry. Partial. partial f with respect to x. So dfdu, I mean. Sorry, dfdu. Um, so, so it's going to be f u, like this? Yeah. At what? At x3. Yeah, that's what this means, right? It's f u at x3. And then what's du dx? Um, that's 1. Why is it 1? Be because u is, in this case, u is equal to what? X. u is equal to x, so what is du dx? It is 1. Right? OK, so let's keep going here. So then we have, then we have what? f what? f v evaluated at what? x3 times dv dx, which is what? 0. Zero exactly. Because is there any x going in for that? No, there isn't. Right. So what term goes away? This thing goes away. Right. So then what's the final answer? F u x3. I know this doesn't feel too good. So what does this say? It tells us that z equals f of t, g of t. So that's z just written in terms of what? So you could write that as z of what? z of t, like that, correct? It tells us that h of xy is f of x, g of y. So one thing we can say is z of t is equal to h of xy, where h of xy is equal to g of x, sorry, f of x, sorry, f of x, g of y, where x is equal to t and what? y is equal to t. Does this, is this a pretty similar setup, actually, to what we just did? It's pretty similar. It's pretty similar. So what I mean by this is if we do z prime of t, what is that going to be equal to? That's the partial h with respect to what? Times what? Partial x. Partial x times dx dt, right? plus partial h with respect to y, what? dy dt, exactly. But what are dx dt and dy dt? What are they? Not yet, not yet. But what is dx dt and dy Look at What does x equal, everybody? t. t. So what's dx dt? It, you can literally get a number in this case. I know we, we look to keep on making notation. So what do we have now? We have, we're not done yet, but we have z prime of t is equal to partial h with respect to x times 1 plus partial h with respect to y times what? 1. We're not quite done yet because we want, what do we want this to be in terms of t, right? We have dh, dh, partial h with respect to h and with partial h with respect to x and partial h with respect to y. But what do we know h of x equals, h of xy equals? Look, it's right here, correct? So if we took this one right here, what's partial h with respect to x going to be equal to? The only thing that's changing is x, right? So it's going to be f prime of x times what? G of y. G of y. Why is the g of y just g of y? It's a constant. So what's partial h with respect to y? fx times what? G prime. g prime y. So what do we do with these two? Plug them in. So now we end up with z prime of t is equal to f prime of x g of y plus fx g prime of y. But what do we know x and y both equal? t. So what do you end up with? z prime of t is f prime t times g of y plus f t g prime of y. So what did we just use? We just used the chain rule in multivariable calculus 
to prove the product rule in single variable calculus. That's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. This right here is not a heck of a lot of notation, but it is, is it a little bit challenging to see and to follow? Absolutely, absolutely. This is really, really cool. Oh, that's a T, that's a T, that's a T, sorry. Did I do it wrong there? Yeah. I did. Thank you. No, 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 no. Yeah. Mr. Se Am I confused or is Mr. Seaman wrong? I'm just As you remember from single variable calculus land, are there higher derivatives? Are there second derivatives? Theoretically, this is third all of X. Yeah, Taylor. Taylor, it goes like, right, exactly. Well, here's the thing. You can do the same exact thing in multivariable land. Of course you can. But there's only one function. key thing that I really think is the most important part of today, which is understanding the notation. So let's take a look at this. If z is in terms of x and y, there's actually four second order partial derivatives. You can do derivative with respect to x and then x, or y then y, x then y, y then x. So there's four of them. There's four of them. There's one key slightly strange element to how it's expressed. Look at what I circled in red right there. Do you notice anything about it? Let's go from the right here. This means take the derivative with respect to y of what you get when you do it with respect to x first. And mathematicians don't like to, you know, they like to simplify. So this is the same thing as this. Well, it's also the same thing as written like this. So you need to understand the three ways it's written. Can someone notice what's the inconsistency between these three? The y of this first there. Yeah, so here's the thing. When you use the parentheses or when you're using this notation, right, the non-differential notation, the outer is what you do last. So you're from inside to outside, right? So you do the derivative with respect to x, and then you do it with respect to y, with respect to x and then y. It's kind of consistent, though, because in differential land, if you have a statement, you do like a parenthesis, and then you do like d over dy over here. So this means if written out in differential land, which one do you do first? The one, on, that one on the right. So do you see how it's different? But can I write it flipped? That you, that's a totally, it? it's, it's a different di differential. It's a different differential. Look, if, what, what look, you look, 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 look. See, look. Uh, dx is fy, then x, so you do y and then x. Can I just write it like the last one? Yes. You, when given this choice, can absolutely write it like this. But what I'm saying is you will commonly see things like this. Because here's why it's really important. Here's why it's really important. How many variables can be in our functions now? I love that, like this. There can be many of them, right? That's a rainbow. So if you, have a, if you have a two variable equation, if you have a two variable equation, there's four second order uh, derivatives, second, or, second order partial derivatives. If you had three, how many second order partial? There's nine of them, right? Could you do multiple derivatives? Could you do, oh wait, three, 27? Third order partial derivatives if you have a three variable? Yes. So is the order really important to understand? Yeah, absolutely. Key thing, if you write it out in differential form, you go from right to left. But if you do write it in non-differential form, you go from left to right. You go from left to right. So what you can do is work on questions like this. So let's say I asked you this one right here, and I said we're just looking at this equation right here. And we want to work out the four second order partial derivatives. Before, to get the second order partial derivatives, let's get the first. first. So, Ali, what's fx, xy going to be? What's that one? y squared yep. plus 6x to the y. Correct. And what is, uh, Cameron, fy, xy going to be? Yeah, x, y, thank you for saying that properly. 2x, y, yep. Plus? Correct. So those are the first order ones. So let's go back over here. And if I say, I don't know, um, Mike, let's say I wanted f, x, x. So do the derivative with respect to x of that one. What do you get? Correct. And then what do you get, uh, Fiona, f, x, y? Do the derivative with respect to y. 2y plus? Uh, oh, 6x. 6x. Yeah, it's still there. Let's go over here. Um, Brenna, what do you get with fyx, xy? 2y, yep, plus? 
And what do you get F Y Y? Brenna again. Yep. Let's look at those four second order partial derivatives. Anybody notice anything about those four? There's something cool. The one thing I'm adding, to, I added already to the homework. If you've already done the homework, you might need to go back. This is an example right here. This is example two in your textbook. I added it to your Veracross assignment. I just want you to be able to understand what's going on in example two because there's two ways we're going to be, I'm going to be asking you to calculate second order partial derivatives. The first way is algebraically. That's fine, generally speaking. The second way, which is kind of the way they introduce it first, but I think it's harder to see, is graphically. And one of those graphic methods is a table. So if you're doing a second order partial derivative, you have to be able to use a table in order to get an estimate for what it is. Look, look at the work that's in your book. This is a reading comprehension part of the homework. Look at example number two. Look at example number two and make sure you understand it. We will talk about it more in We've only covered the first half of 14.7. <laughs>